this is Shenny. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, wow. You can hear me as well. I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, so you and three colleagues, three co-founders of the Pirate Bay uh, earlier this year, were sentenced to a year in jail and a fine that amounts uh, in American dollars to uh, 3.6, well, nearly $4 million. The case is on appeal right now. What's, what's the latest update? Where do we stand with that? Well, first of all, it's uh, only three people that actually are part of the Pirate Bay, and the last person was our ISP. Um, so, so we don't really know why he got sentenced. But uh, right now we're um, trying to get the verdict uh, revoked because of uh, the obvious situation that the, the judge uh, was in the same different organizations as all of the opponent's lawyers. So, so they were friends. So Thomas Nordstrom was accused of bias. Uh, the courts are, are said to be hearing, uh, nearing, nearing a decision on the accusations of bias that, that this judge uh, was uh, on, on the boards of various uh, pro-copyright organizations. Uh, what do you know about where that hearing stands? Uh, the last day to actually deliver paperwork for that is on Tuesday, I think, and then there's going to be two weeks more waiting period, and then we're going to know. Are you stressed out about the possibility that you might end up doing a year in jail time and, and paying a lot of money? Not really. Uh, <laughs> Severe, you, you look like a pretty relaxed, mellow guy right now. Yeah, but all of us are actually. So it's, uh, you know, we've been uh, waiting for a long time to actually go to court at all, and uh, we know that it's going to take five or more years before it's actually done in the court system. So there's no, no need to actually be stressed out right now about this. <laughs> Okay, so th this has actually been a pretty busy time for you this past week in the heat of the, uh, the protests about the Iran elections. Uh, you changed the logo on the front page of the, fire of the Pirate Bay to the Persian Bay, and as I understand it, you guys were involved in uh, supporting or operating or, or providing some form of support uh, to a, a forum where, where people inside and outside Iran could talk about what was happening. Uh, what exactly were you doing there? Well, we were only helping promoting some uh, other people in the cluster surrounding us, our friends and friends of our friends, who are setting up tour networks and uh, different VPN systems and proxies and so on, just promoting the, the forums and so on. So we didn't do all that much, but we, uh, we have a pretty good uh, name for promoting democracy and freedom of speech. So people kind of uh, trust us when we promote something, so that's what we did. Well, I think some people hearing about that would say, what does a massive file-sharing enabling service have to do with free speech and, and democracy or uh, countering censorship? Well, everything, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but it's, it's essentially, uh, if you take it all, all the way down to what it actually uh, is all about when it comes to file sharing, it's actually about the freedom of sharing things, which is essentially the same as freedom of speech. Well, okay, so, so you guys also last week launched uh, a VPN service that people have been uh, talking about and anticipating for a long time, the iPredator Global Energy Service. Can you tell us about the name, where the name comes from? Well, it's uh, in the European Union, we have something called iPred, iPred Law, which is the Intellectual Property uh, Enforcement Directive. And we don't like it, so we use the name to something positive into that. <laughs> uh, how, does, how does the service work? Why did you launch it? It's a normal VPN system, basically. Uh, we launched it because people asked us to launch it, and uh, yet again, people trust us in what we do, so uh, if they feel happier, if it's us running the service, that's good. You know, what, do you, what do you think about the case that's happening here in America right now? Uh, Jamie Thomas Raz, a Minnesota mother of four, who was fined uh, nearly $2 million, $80,000 per song, for having downloaded uh, allegedly some 24 songs over Kazaa. Uh, um, I read actually on Twitter, in the video uh, chat, someone uh, checked how much each of the people dying in the Air France accident uh, actually costed for Air France, and it was $24,000. So uh, I think those songs are a bit, a bit overvalued. <laughs> uh, one of the Pirate Bay founders, I can't remember whether it was you or, or one of your 
colleagues bound to, uh, to if, if the court ordered fine actually does go through and you're forced to pay that, uh, bound to pay that off in tiny micro payments. Is that uh, still the plan if the case doesn't win on appeal? Actually, I don't think anyone is going to pay anything whatsoever, <laughs> not even micro payments. So I don't know where that comes from. What do you think? <laughs> Uh, the host earlier, we were just talking about pirates and politics that the pirate party launched earlier this year. How do you guys feel about having inspired a whole political movement? I mean, did you did you see yourselves in this light at any point? No, no, of course not. Uh, we didn't actually set up to be something like this. We just wanted to play around with technology and everybody else shut down, so we thought it was a good thing to stay up. That's everything for us. So, it, it feels weird sometimes. Well, mostly when people recognize you on the streets, that's really weird. But also when people talk about you on the internet and on the media, it's, it's really weird. Um, but well, you know, it's, it's good to inspire people, whatever you get inspired into, so. Well, you, you talk about when people recognize you on the streets. I mean, how has your life changed since the trial, since that ruling? I mean, are you sort of avoiding going out of the house more? I, uh, you look so relaxed here, I hesitate to even ask the question, but... How have things changed for you? Uh, everybody's really positive, besides maybe the RIAA and, and the... <laughs> but I don't really care about people that don't care about me, so it's no problem. You know? <laughs> you're, you're sort of preaching to the converted in this room. I mean, I think about a lot of people here understand the value that you propose, understand the value that the Pirate Bay proposes. But what would you say to someone, say, reading the transcript for this chat later uh, from Hollywood, maybe an artist or a filmmaker, who sees you as a thief and as, you know, death the destroyer of worlds? Like, are there practical solutions that you can offer that, that they may not have thought about for getting paid in a world where media is largely free? Well, the thing is that most of these people are stuck with the idea that they have to get paid the, the way they used to be paid. And the problem is that they don't even try to see another possibility on how to get the funding. So they just say there's no other possibility because we can't find anything because we're not really looking for it. Uh, and it's not really my job to come up with the financing deals. Uh, I fix something or refix something for the industry distribution. And they need also to come up with that idea of how to make the money themselves. <laughs> We're quite smart, but we can't come up with that. They'd be paying you the $3.6 million if that were the case, huh? Well, it would be more fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pretend you're talking to my mom. Why should laws exist that allow sites or services like the Pirate Bay to, to, to exist? Why should this not be illegal? Because uh, it would infringe on so many other laws, actually. Um, there's the freedom of speech, there's uh, privacy, uh, it, it's the freedom of exchanging cultural ideas and so on. I was watching some of the open video things and everybody's talking about the, uh, the values of remix and all of, and, and it comes to open art and all of this, but without distribution, you know, no one would see all of this material anyhow. Guys, I want to open it up to, uh, to questions from the audience. Do we have some questions for Peter Sunday here? Shout out! What are you drinking? What are you drinking, Peter? <laughs> what does it look like? Do you have any question? I got one. What is it? Where do you see yourself in five or ten years? Peter, where do you see yourself in five or ten years? Are you a judge? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Keep on coming. Is there anybody else out there with a question? Do you ever see the entertainment industry compromising with you? Didn't hear that one. Do you see the entertainment industry compromising with you? Negotiating? Uh, maybe in a couple of years when they don't have any choice left. They have to. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm serious. 
that follow-up question for that? What form do you think such a compromise would take? Peter, are you able to hear those questions? No. What form might that compromise take? Um, what are the ways that you can imagine working with the entertainment industry once all your options are gone for them? Well, we're working together with them, but uh, when we talk about the entertainment industry, I, I guess you mean the Hollywood and the big four record companies. The people who are want you to die. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. Well, I don't even want to work with them whatsoever. <laughs> $6 million in fines. How would you work with them? Well, um, I would employ them only to have the option to give them a really, really lousy payment and really lousy work, something like that. Um, <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I think that in the end they're going to understand that they need distribution for free as well. So we, we're not going to charge people for, for the distribution because it's the peers. So maybe they should pay the seers that. <laughs> <laughs> Another question from the audience up here in the front. Should I just shout out? Shout out. Uh, what kind of impact do you think that the uh, pirate uh, party will have in the European Parliament? And will it affect the things that you do? Peter, the impact of the pirate party in the European Parliament, what sort of effect do you imagine that having on the sort of work that you do? Well, on um, what we do, uh, I think it will be a good help. And I think they will do a really good job on getting these different questions uh, talked about within the province and they're really good at getting uh, stuff in the media and it would, it's, it's more about, about getting the attention and it's... We get you later, yeah. Okay, up here in the front. Um, so Pirate Bond is an arts collective that started Pirate Bay and has always stated that they, uh, once they're done with their projects, they're done with their projects. Will Pirate Bay ever be done as a project? Here, I don't know if you're able to hear any of that. Yeah, that. Okay. Hopefully in a couple of years, I think Pirate Bay won't be needed anymore. Um, that's the idea of Pirate Bay. <laughs> Another question back here. What's happening with Pirate Bay now? What's happening with Pirate Bay now other than uh, the recent news this week uh, about assisting in, in the, uh, the conversation around Iran? Okay, so uh, in like two days, we're going to release some of the biggest news ever with the Pirate Bay, and I would love to tell you about it, but it's so secret and so, so I can't reveal it right now. What a tease! Oh. Oh, yeah. No, you didn't just do that! Come on! I did, and it's going to be so huge that everybody in the audience is going to talk about it and say, like, fuck! <laughs> So two days. In like two days, maybe three. I hate you. <laughs> you over here, Mr. Pettis. Uh, with you know, so, with, with so much globalization in your country, what what do you, what message do you have for the United States? I don't think, what, what 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 would you like to see the United States do right now as a culture? Here, there's a lot of excitement uh, about your cause uh, in, in Sweden and in Europe. What would you like to see happen in the United States in terms of mobilization or support? Well, I would love more people to actually stand up uh, and fight with the, for instance, with the EFF and all the other organizations that do a really good job. And uh, making Obama maybe uh, open up a bit more about his ideas and how this would become something like a property. Um, and the Pirate Party group, I hope they grow the US. I hope the Green Party works as well. I have a really good view from this. Uh, I want to I want to read off a question from the Twitter. I feel like I'm on CNN here. Somebody asked here, uh, did you do did, did you and your co-founders do research about the gallery before launching the Pirate Bay? And if so, so what, what was the consensus, or, or what did you, what risks did you decide to just accept? Well, it, what actually happened was uh, at the rate when they took all of the private service and so on, they actually took our uh, order as well. <laughs> so yes, we did uh, legal research, and uh, the police tried to arrest him as well. You're referring to the, the, the time when government illegally 
seized your servers. Yes, and they stole our servers. So I don't know if everybody in here knows what happened after that. The, the architecture of the network changed. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, yeah, basically what we did is that we moved around the servers so that even we don't know where they are. <laughs> Your hand to God. I don't believe in God, but I... Your hand to God. Yeah, I have to sign you by. You don't know where your servers are? No. Oh. I know one of them. <laughs> That's it. We have some more questions from the audience. Ah, oh, okay, hi, go ahead. Yeah. I was wondering what you say to small filmmakers or smaller artists who aren't really that business savvy, who don't really, you know, they don't have some team of business development experts that can figure out some sort of new business model that are threatened by Pirate Bay and by Torrance and by the entire piracy movement, who care about their intellectual property because they don't really know, you know, how to create some new business model. You know, they're not MBAs. They just want to make their art, sell it, you know, on DVDs or whatever without having to reinvent, you know, some economic system. That so, so, Peter, somebody's asking about independent artists who aren't at studio level. They're, they're not the guys suing you, but they're still trying to figure out how to make it. Yeah, I, I understand the, the issue here. And the thing is, uh, probably Torrance is the best thing that ever happened for you guys. And I know that there is not a really good, the perfect solution right now, but I think most of the artists, even in the those in the category who actually earn more money out of sharing their contents using credit cards and, and publishing it on the internet. And being afraid of the internet or saying I don't like it is as being against the color of blue and saying that we have to abandon it because it's, it's ugly. You know, it, it, it's not going to happen. I hope somebody's tweeting that. <laughs> okay, do we have another question from the audience? Okay, right here, please. Um, is anyone documenting this on film, or uh, like the process of um, the raid and the trial? Is anyone making a documentary about you? Peter, were you able to hear that? Is anybody documenting sort of all the drama that you're going through? Do you have a documentary? Where's the reality show? When will that be torn? Well, uh, we're going to get her. Sorry, what was so that? I, actually, no, but seriously, what we're doing is we have one guy that is following us uh, around for like the past year. He's doing a documentary, but he's uh, freelance and he needs money, so if anyone has money for him, yeah. you're welcome to participate in what, the project. What's his name and how uh, do interested parties go about doing that? Uh, Simon Klose, and you can just email me, uh, write to me on Skype or whatever, and I'll uh, get you in contact with him. Uh, and also, uh, we're doing a theater uh, show next year, a theater tour in Sweden, about the Pirate Bay. This will be what, a musical comedy theater? No, actually, this is, I'm not kidding. Uh, it's a real theater show with the Swedish National uh, Theater. <laughs> How a documentary on Pirate Bay trial, how could it be financed and then produced if there's no business model? <laughs> Credit cards, baby. <laughs> <laughs> how how is he financing the documentary film, someone asks? Right now? Yeah. Well, uh, like most artists do, by friends or family. <laughs> Another question? Okay, back here. Why did you name it Pirate Bay? Why the name the Pirate Bay here? Actually, not much to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Must be all that apple juice you're drinking. They actually have like a question submitted by a post-it note. Well, so this is when you're beyond Twitter. This is post-Twitter. The question is from Peter. Have you talked with the elite torrent mods who are getting it off probation slash out of jail soon? I didn't hear that. Sorry again. What about the elite torrent mods? Who are getting out of jail and off probation. Who are about to be released from jail or probation soon. Have you talked to them? Have you been in communication with them? No, oh. oh, I met some of the guys that had problems and issues before, but uh, never the elite torrent guys. Good question. Do we have some? I have, I have to say one thing. Please. Last year we actually did, uh, we, we bought a bus and we went to one of the biggest European art uh, 
exhibitions in uh, Bolsano in Italy, and we drove the bus all the way, and we didn't have computers with us. Uh, so what we actually did, we, we made a PHP programming language, which is posted homepage. <laughs> <laughs> so we wrote posted page, not to put them up on the, on the window. <laughs> Um, depends on which mood I'm in. I'm very honest. I'm, um, 
I can see the use for copyright, maybe in more commercial things, but when it comes to personal things, I, I don't see copyright as something positive for humanity, so uh, something in between. I think we have another question over here, sort of in the middle of this room. Yeah, I was wondering what the relationship between your intellectual property politics and your other left wing politics are, and what relationship you see exists between them. The relationship between your left wing political worldview and your unusual ideas about intellectual property. I didn't <laughs> Was that it? <laughs> I covered it. Okay. Go ahead. Green or white or red, that's my favorite colors. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I don't see that they clash in, in any way. So, um, well, so yeah. what, what's the relation between the two? I mean, uh, is that something where both sort of evolved uh, symbiotically? What, what came first? The ideas that you had about the sharing and exchange of information online or sort of the, the, the social and political world? Well, I think the politics of it kind of grew on me. Uh, I'm, you know, raised in a, a socialist family and so on, and a social, so socialist, I think also most of us in Sweden. Uh, and and I, I, I grew up with copying stuff and sharing stuff with my friends. I didn't see that anything was bad with it. Uh, and I don't see that anything is bad with sharing stuff. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. You. You're for sharing, and we know that, but are you for or against, or do you have an opinion on reselling what you've downloaded? Because there's a big market on people who download stuff and then resell it. Uh, what is your opinion on that? Peter, were you able to hear that? The, the questionnaire asks, uh, do you have an opinion on the reselling of downloaded information? We're clear on the fact that you are for uh, sharing, but what about people who download information that's being shared and then resell it? That sort of Secondary market. Do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, well, I'm kind of agnostic about that because um, in like the rich part of the world, I don't. I see it as something really bad, and I think that fostering online actually helps that with taking away the incentive to make money from downloading and reselling. Uh, but when it comes to the poorer countries, like in uh, some of the Southern American countries and. In China, for instance, a lot of people actually need to do that in order to make some money at all. And I think that there you must be great with the intellectual property. Um, but I would hope that people would need to buy things like that instead of just download it. Ms. Weezing, one last question. Anybody want to have the last word here? You in the back. Uh, how much of the content that simulates the red internet space free? Could you repeat that, please? Uh, what are the amount, what the percentage of content, content that is free? How much free content is there on the part of it? Creative Commons license, public domain, so on and so forth. How much? Yes. How much free yeah, content? Uh, I don't have any exact stats, but it's, it's a lot of the content, actually. Yeah, I was surprised when we did a study about it. And I thought it was like 70%, like 7 zero is actually free content. <laughs> and we're going to close with communal whistling. Peter Sunda, thank you for joining us. Thank you all. Thank you.